I have the pleasure today to welcome Vinko David, the Secretary General of the Bern Union, to our interview. So you've been the Secretary General now since March 2017, and when we look back, we can say it has been quite turbulent times in terms of international trade and international business. Um, what have been the most notable challenges or maybe events during that time since you became Secretary General? Well, the turbulence is of all times. Let's start with mm -hmm. that. I mean, we had the global financial crisis, 2008-2009. We had the commodity crisis 2015, mm -hmm. and now we have another sort of event, and that is trade conflicts, yeah. uh, especially between uh, the US and China, but with global ramifications. And uh, here in Britain, we also have Brexit already having its impact on the UK economy, and not so much yet on the European economy mm -hmm. as a whole. One point of or one thing of change uh, always coming on the regulatory side. Uh, we're currently discussing what's to expect with Basel IV and the implications on on capital. Um, what are your Bern Union members expecting there, and might there be a difference responses between the export credit agencies and the private insurers? Oh, that's a good question. Um, Let's start with everything in the regulatory arena mm -hmm. that is going on now. Yeah. There is indeed Basel IV, some call it Basel III, the implementation of mm -hmm. Basel III, it depends on whom you ask. Uh, regulators normally say it's not Basel IV, it's the implementation of Basel III, yeah. while everyone else calls it Basel IV, and the compromise is Basel III and a half. There is a lot going on. There is regulation and there are proposals coming from the Basel Committee itself. Mm -hmm. Um, there are implementation uh, developments in, for instance, the EU and also in the individual member states of the EU and other countries, of course, outside the EU. Yeah. Um, this regulation mainly refers to bank regulation, mm -hmm. whether it's solvency, liquidity, etc. Now, much of this regulation uh, deals with what capital a bank has to set aside mm -hmm. for certain risks. Why is that important for credit insurance? Uh, it's not only exporters that take credit insurance, but also banks financing these exports. So banks want to be sure, in the first place, how much capital they have to set aside when they have cover from a credit insurance. Uh, and in the second place, how stable that regulation is. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't change all the time. Mm -hmm. Certainly not for what we call medium and long-term credits, credits up to 15 or even 20 years. You want some stability in your capital requirements there. A lot has been happening. Regulators in general do not know what credit insurance is, be it credit insurance from a public yeah. provider, an ECA, Export Credit Agency, or from a private insurer. So they have more across-the-board regulation with a broad brush about bank uh, capital requirements when these banks have guarantees or securities. Now, it so happens that credit insurance is one of the best guarantees or securities you can have. Uh, there, is, uh, there are very good statistics about that, uh, managed by the ICC, the International Chamber of Commerce, and that shows that a bank with credit insurance from a public provider on its loans, well, these banks have a very safe asset with that. Some have even said even better than a triple A government guarantee, triple mm -hmm. A government asset. So that's very safe. Now, that information is very often new to regulators. So what we are trying to do together with the banks, because it's the banks which are regulated, is to educate the regulator 
how good credit insurance is for these banks to enable banks to support trade. Mm -hmm. Sometimes these regulators are surprised when they learn what good uh, collateral credit insurance is. Sometimes they are not interested. Mm -hmm. So it, it really depends. But uh, we have, for instance, uh, provided feedback to the PRA, that's part of the Bank of England, that had written a consultation paper on the value of guarantees on bank loans, which completely ignored credit insurance or the way credit insurance works. So that is one thing. Uh, second thing is that regulators sometimes differentiate between credit insurance provided by private insurers and by ECAs. That's a more difficult matter to tackle, um, where some private insurers, members of the Bern Union, say that their product and their credit rating is as good as many ECAs. Uh, loans with their cover will attract higher capital requirements. Um, that is, for instance, a proposal uh, in the European Union to differentiate between private and public insurance. Now, the Bern Union is not a political association. We cannot uh, uh, say, well, this is right, this is wrong. But the thing we can do, if asked, is educate these regulators about the benefits of credit insurance, not for the insurers per se, but to enable trade. Do not forget about 13% of all cross-border trade in the world is credit insured mm -hmm. by Bern Union members. That's an amount of $2.5 trillion every year. Mm -hmm. If that falls away because banks are no longer prepared to finance it because they have too high capital requirements, that would be an economic disaster. And that's what we need to prevent. Mm -hmm. As you are mentioning, it's quite a significant amount that is insured or tra uh, amount of trade that is insured by Bern Union members, public and private. Uh, I would like to ask you about, uh, let me say, a little bit of a buzzword which is going on in the insurance industry a lot, but also in finance, which is sustainable finance investment and insurance. This is not only triggered by the United Nations initiative on um, the principles of sustainable insurance and sustainable finance, but in, in, in some areas, in particular in the insurance industry and also in investment, they feel the urge of being more ethical and looking after the social uh, implications also of their um, insurance contracts and what, which projects they are insuring, but also on the finance and investment side. So is there anything going on with your, uh, within the Bern Union uh, members? Yes, definitely. First of all, um, looking at sustainability and uh, insuring responsibly is not something new. Mm -hmm. um, Bern Union members and certainly the public Bern Union members uh, are looking at ethical issues, uh, environmental impact of the projects mm -hmm. they insure the financing of, um, social impact, impact on human rights, etc. That has already, that is already going on for many years, yes. uh, although not always much known mm -hmm. by the wider public. Um, second, especially these ECAs are subject to their national authorities. So these national export credit agencies act in accordance with the national policy on sustainability on any of these areas. Third, um, there is an agreement in the OECD, or there are many agreements in the OECD, but there uh, are agreements in the OECD on sustainability in terms of environmental impact, social impact, human rights, bribery. Um, and OECD members, including ECAs from OECD countries, adhere to these rules. Mm -hmm. And not only ECAs in OECD countries, also some ECAs outside the OECD find that these rules are worth following. So that is one. So it's not something new. What's, um, but perhaps ECAs are a bit silent about their mm -hmm. good works as well. 
This being said, ECAs are not um, sustainability policy uh, organizations. Mm -hmm. They are there in the first place to support the national exports, but they want to do so responsibly. Lately, there have been discussions with banks mm -hmm. who have embraced the UN initiative, initiative on Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs, um, how insurers and banks could align their policy in this area to the required high level mm -hmm. of sustainability. These discussions have just started on top of what ECAs are already doing and uh, these discussions with banks will continue. I, I cannot say yet what the outcome will be. Mm -hmm. A possible outcome will be that ECAs make it clearer how they are meeting SDGs, Sustainable Development Goals, because they are meeting mm -hmm. quite a number of these 17, I believe, uh, sustainability goals. Yeah. And But it's not known. They are not publishing about that. So maybe ECAs should make it better known. Yes, thank you. That's maybe something the Bern Union could also help kind of making more transparent. Um, my last question uh, would be looking forward a bit into the future. What's next for the Bern Union? Well, um, we are still a growing association and we are the association of export credit and investment insurers. Um, Every year we get new members, both public insurers and private insurers. So internally we will grow to be uh, an even better uh, re representative of the industry worldwide. Um, we have recently set up a legal and regulatory committee. You've asked about regulation. Mm -hmm. That's uh, at the moment we have mainly talked about bank regulation, yes. but there is of course also insurers regulation, yeah. say solvency. Yeah. Um, there is so much coming up for both insurers themselves and their customers, especially their bank customers. It, it we really needed to put together all knowledge we had in the Bern Union. So we have recently set up a task force to see what's going on and to advise where we could act and where it's better. If others could act, where we could work together with other associations um, and where we could do it ourselves. Mm -hmm. So we will be more involved in regulation. Then we also discussed the trade conflicts. Some call it trade wars. I think that's a bit too aggressive at the moment. I prefer calling it uh, trade conflicts. Um, if it really uh, gets deeper or if it really gets worse, then uh, maybe we'll discuss, discuss internally in the Berlin Union what insurers could do to, to keep the insurance sustainable mm -hmm. for exports. Mm -hmm. We have also set up an outreach task force as we want to work more closely together with other financial partners in the industry. Um, that is especially at the moment developmental financial institutions, say development banks, both bilateral national development mm -hmm. banks and multilateral development banks. And we want to work more closely together with other direct lenders, exim banks. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Um, we often do not know each other very well. We are each busy with our own mandates, our own tasks, our, serving our own customers. But when we put together our efforts, we could get something better and we could increase the capacity for export and development finance. And that is really also one of our goals. Uh, it would be good if export credit insurers, both public and private, development banks and exit banks got to know each other a bit better, so to reinforce each other and grow capacity worldwide. On that note, thank you very much, Vinko David, Secretary General of the Bern Union.